thank you very much for coming today. Georgia has the fifth largest prison population in the nation. About one in 15 adults in Georgia is under supervision by the Department of Corrections. 75% of ex-offenders remain unemployed a year after their release. This rally is a launching point for ex-offenders to find jobs, housing, and education in the state of Georgia. We cannot turn away from this issue unless we want to force these men and women back into a life of crime. These people have paid their debt to society. It is time to put them back to work. We always talk about the white collar jobs and the blue collar jobs. And today, we're going to talk about green collar jobs too because we're going the green mile. We want all business owners and manufacturers in the state of Georgia to put people back to work. It's time to go to work. These people are productive citizens and they want to get back into society. So we want to make sure that we offer them a second chance. Yes, we may fall down, but we get up. We can get up and stand up and speak up and speak out and work hard. These are the people who we are fighting for right now. Thank you, Senator James. We are certainly grateful for your leadership in this effort. And we do want to say that ex-offenders do deserve the opportunity to be orientated into society and that when they are reorientated, that there are adequate opportunities for meaningful, gainful employment so that crime is not the only option for them. As we give them their second chance, our state of Georgia has a second chance. We have an opportunity to revitalize our workforce. We have an opportunity to take advantage of committed men and women who have paid their debt to society and who are now in a position to make valuable contributions to the society, to the economy, and to the culture of our state. I want to applaud again Senator James for taking this initiative and I want to stand with her and support her as we do what we can to revitalize and to redeem the ex-offenders in Georgia. We need them, they need us. Let's come together and make it happen. The time is now. Thank you. Donzella knows me as Stucky, Senator James. So um, the last name I know is new to some folks. Um, I just want to thank Senator James for putting this together. I am a former public defender in Fulton County, so I have worked firsthand in the court system representing folks who have been charged with crimes. And I know how hard it is to move forward with your lives after you've been through the criminal justice system. For the past four years, I have been working with the Criminal Defense Lawyers Association on legislation that would make it easier for persons who've had their cases dismissed to have their records expunged so that when they go to apply for a job, they don't have to deal with a criminal arrest, which makes it very hard, as many of you know, for them to get back on the right track and find gainful employment. That bill has not moved forward, unfortunately, this session, but we did have a good hearing in judiciary. We've got a lot of dialogue going with the prosecutors and the Georgia Bureau of Information. They handle the records, the criminal records. So we're working with all these parties on trying to move forward with this issue. I'm hoping by next session, we will have a bill in place that will make it easier for folks who've had their cases dismissed to move forward and have their records cleared so they can get jobs. So you've got my commitment to continue working on this issue. And thank you for the good work that y'all do in our communities. Thank you. I, I certainly want to thank Senator James for her work in always being on the front line for issues that are important to all of Georgia citizens. And I want to thank all of you that are here today representing a very, very important cause. Actually, you're representing two issues in one. If you realize it, that a part of why we have such high incarceration rates is because we also have such high unemployment rates. And one of the things that we want to talk about with re-entry is providing not only opportunities, but the skilled training that goes with those opportunities to be able to stay on a good footing 
to earn a livable wage, and then we won't have the revolving door going in and out of our prison systems. I firmly believe that the two are connected. I also want to make sure that we as African American citizens don't end up on the opposite side of the green divide. We've got to make sure that we are a part of and participating in, from the beginning, all of the technology, all of the economic opportunities, all of the programs that can make that difference. Now, I want to thank Dr. Hall. Where are you? He's back there. I want to thank Dr. Hall for keeping us, as legislators, abreast of what's going on. You know, even though we're here every day, it takes you guys to make sure that we know what the real deal is about how legislation affects the people in the, in the community. And he has done an excellent job. I serve on the state's Judiciary Committee, and I was one of those people that fought vehemently against House Bill 1059 when they passed the Sexual Predators Bill and declared that they wanted Georgia to be the toughest on sexual offenders in the country. The problem with that is this. Everybody that gets arrested and charged with being a sexual predator is not a sexual predator. There has been studies done by the Barton Law Institute at Emory University that there is an actual process that you can do before you sentence somebody and give them a life sentence because if you sentence them to 20 years or 10 years and they're on the sexual predators list for life, that's a life sentence. So there's, there's evidence that you can actually do a tier system before you sentence these people to make sure that everybody is not thrown in the same basket. You know that there's the Marcus Dixons out there. You know that Janarlo Wilsons are out there. There's hundreds of them, if not thousands. And we know that they were innocent young men doing what teenagers do, if you admit it, and they got caught up in the legal system in an unjust piece of legislation. We need to make that change. We need to make sure that people are not forced to move from homes that they've lived in for 40 years because they had an offense when they were 17 and are now on the sexual predators list. So I applaud Dr. Hall, I applaud all of my colleagues and all of you for the work that we're doing. I hope Dr. Hall, with the help of my colleague Representative Stephanie Stuckey Benfield, who serves on judiciary with me, that we can revisit some of this legislation and make sure that we take the harmful parts out. We want to make sure that we have opportunities when they come out of prison, when they come out of the system, they can reconnect with their families. They can have reasonable opportunities for education and jobs. Did you know that now when you come out of prison, you don't qualify for federal Pell Grants? You can't get money to go to school. Makes no sense. But at any rate, I thank you all so much for your advocacy. Thank you for the continued work. God bless you all. Thank you, Senator James. I want to thank Dr. Hall as well for being here today and doing this press conference. It is important to me because I have been for the last 20 years a member of the National Foundation of Women Legislators where we have visited prisons across this country, Mexico and Canada, talking about second chance programs that we have instituted in various states. One state that we have instituted the second chance program uh, is New Mexico. So then you have one in Mexico. You have one in various states. So I know how important it is to give a person a second chance. Then we're here for the Green Mile. We're working very hard in very, very many uh, areas that, that they have used as landfills over the years. It's been a 40-year journey uh, in, in various areas in Georgia where they built homes on top of dumps, parks on top of dumps. So if we can get the right mindset in people by talking to them and educating them on what to do, what not to do, how to recycle, how important it is, recycle everything. So I appreciate each and every one of you for coming out here today. And I want you to understand, I'm not on any of those, uh, the judiciary or any of those other committees, but I am a worker. I, I'm a foot soldier because 20 years ago, none of this was talked about. And that's how long I've been doing this with your dad and other people. So God is truly able. Thank you. Thank you.